What's up everybody, it's Blaze from Funbox here and before we continue with our combat tutorial series, turn-based combat tutorial series, I want you guys to go out there and find some sprites that we can use because this next section we will be dealing with character sequences. And this, the sequences I mean, as well as some of the features that we will be using in it are a part of 2.3 and later. So if you have anything that's pre 2.3, then I'm sorry, but uh, this is where we start uh, leading into the 2.3 exclusive stuff. On top of using the sequences, we will also be using the broadcast system. And we will also be using the moments. I will get into these in more detail at a slightly later stage. But for now, we're just going to focus all of our attention on building these sequences up. So really quickly, before we get started, go ahead and grab the sprites that you're going to use for this tutorial series. Or if you don't have any, then I will provide you guys with a link for some free sprites. You can donate if you want to, to the creator itself, but they're for the most part free. And we're going to use those if you don't already have your own sprites. So go ahead and check out the links. I'll put them either in a card if it will allow me to, or they'll definitely be in the description and in the comments section below. So check those out if you want to use them. All right, let's keep going now. We are going to be working with sequences. And the way that we are going to use our sequences is we are going to line up all of our animations into one whole sequence. Now what I mean by that is we're going to create one sequence per unit that we make. Now we're only going to work with two units, but naturally if you have your own version of it, you'll have multiple sequences for multiple characters in your game. But basically each of these bars will represent a separate animation. So let's say for example we have our idle animation here, we have our attack, I'm just gonna write ATK, we have defense, etc., etc. Right, so that's what each of these sequences, uh, animations in our sequence, are going to do. And what we're going to do so that we can control it is in our actual base object. So in our base unit, we are going to write some code that will determine the start and the end point of a particular animation that we're going to play. And then when the animation marker reaches the end of the animation, it's going to loop back to the start and then play it again, and then loop back, play it again, and so on and so forth until we tell the actual animator to play a different animation and loop that back. So basically what we're going to create is an animation state machine of sorts. And like I said, it's going to be controlled. We're going to write the base code here in the B unit section, but where we determine the start and the endpoints of each animation will actually be in the individual objects or the individual units. For example, in the O player or in the O enemy. And where we define them is naturally going to be in the create event. So as an example in pseudocode, we would say that as an example, idle start is let's say zero and then idle end, just as an example, is 10. And so naturally in our base unit, in the animation state machine, which is actually the step event, we're going to run a switch statement, which will hold all of this information. So we're going to run a switch state and then from there, dependent on which state we're running, so for example, idle, we're going to say
I'm pretty sure it's image index. It might be sprite index. I keep forgetting. I keep getting those two mixed up. But if our image index is greater than the, for example, idle end, then the image index, we're going to reset that back to the start. And so with this simple code, we're going to be able to create an endless loop for any particular state. Or alternatively, if we have, say, in the attack, we can put in the code that will tell it to say, hey, it's finished the attack animation. We need to go back into the idle state. All right. So that's, that's basically what our animation controller is going to look like. And at certain points of this particular code, uh, sorry, in certain points of the animation, we are going to have certain moments. Whoops, <laughs> I didn't mean to cross that out. I, I write on a very strange slant, but we are going to use moments. And basically moments are pieces of code, small pieces of code that get run on a particular frame for now. For now, they're only in the sequences editor. Eventually, they will also be in the objects as well as the sprite editor as well. That's what I read on the roadmap anyway. But uh, for now, at least at the time of filming this video, they're only available in the sequences editor. So for example, in the attack um, animation, we want to play the attack moment. And what it's going to do is it's going to run this script and it does whatever this script tells it to do at this particular frame. The same thing happens with broadcasts is at a particular point in time, if it calls out this broadcast, anybody that's paying attention, any object that's paying attention to this particular broadcast will run whatever code it needs to. But like I said, we will get to these two at a slightly later stage. The first thing that we're going to focus on in this video and in the next one and maybe in the one afterwards is getting some basic animations as well as our sequences put in. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And in the next one, we'll head straight into writing up this code. Anyway, guys, that's all for me. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.